Hello, I'd like to talk to you about what shifts the supply curve. And up here we have supply shifts. I've written, written the top four things that shift the supply curve. You probably can think of other things that could go on those lists, but this is kind of a list of the top four. I've also uh, written or drawn a supply and demand curve, downward sloping demand curve, which implies if the price goes down, people buy more, holding everything else constant, such as income and prices of related goods. Upward sloping supply curve, which assumes that as prices go up, firms are more willing to sell to you, or so willing to sell more to you. So price up, quantity supplied goes up. We have an equilibrium price. Let's draw that in here now. Bring up my drawing curves. And I'm going to just draw it right here. And let's select this, move it down just a tiny bit, get it right to where the two curves cross. Now remember where the two curves cross assume or implies eh, that's close enough. Implies that we have an equilibrium. There's no shortage or surplus. And also normally we draw these lines. Um let's see if I can put a dashed line. Um uh, well, maybe not. Hopefully it's pretty clear that's our equilibrium. A lot of times we draw a dashed line just to show this is our equilibrium price. Let's assume we have an equilibrium price of, uh, uh, let's say, $400 and equilibrium quantity. And let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. And there we go, $400. And actually, let me use my drawing tools since I enjoy drawing. Let's say this is a thousand units. Okay, now let's assume, well, let's go eat through each one of these four things. Change of the number of sellers. One of the things we often find is if an uh, industry is very profitable, that invites new firms to enter in. Well, if new firms enter in, what that does is it should shift our supply curve to the right. That is, at $400, firms are willing to sell more because there's now more firms. So I'm going to draw this with a, uh, let's choose a color. I'm just going to draw it freehand. And there's our supply curve. Supply, I'll call it the new one. And then we'll show that it shifted to the right. If it shifted to the right, Actually, I'm going to do my dashed lines. And I'm going to use an eraser. I'm going to use a small eraser, and I'm going to just draw my dashed lines right here. Aren't those pretty dashed lines? What if I can do that on here? Cool. So fun to make these drawings look like really neat modern art. Okay, there it is. And now, what we need to do is so we have uh, draw so instead of four hundred dollars let's say firms are willing to s at three hundred we have a new equilibrium price and instead of producing a thousand they produce twelve hundred and why is that well because new firms makes the product less scarce if the price stayed at the old price so let me do this line let's say the price stayed up here at four hundred dollars but 400 firms would still be willing to, or at 400, we have a new supply curve. Firms, instead of um, 1,000, be willing to produce maybe over here somewhere, maybe, um, well, let's say 1,400. People still want to buy 1,000 since nothing happened to the demand curve. Well, now that would imply that we have a surplus of 400 units. Well, if there's a surplus, how do you get rid of a surplus? You let the price go down. And so the price goes down until we come to a new equilibrium down here somewhere. Price falls, more output. Cool. So that's one of the reasons a lot of firms don't like to see uh, you know, an entry of new firms makes, makes the market more competitive makes product less scarce, lowers prices, increases output. Let's talk about cost of production. Well, if cost of production go down, cost of production could include my wages of employees. Be careful on a lot of econ quizzes. If you're talking about wages, wages tend to be one of the largest costs of production for 
for like universities, for many, many different firms. And so when we say wages go down, we mean cost of production go down. If we talk about income, normally that's people's ability to purchase. Now, obviously, they're related. But for example, let's say wages in the car industry go down. Well, if wages go down, car firms are now more profitable. It doesn't probably affect the demand for cars that much because those workers are a small part of the overall um, demand. So we normally just assume demand curve stays the same. And so, but the workers are being paid less. Well, assuming they're equally productive, what that tends to do is shift the supply curve to the right. Car companies can produce cars cheaper. So they're willing to sell the cars at a lower price. And so instead of selling a car for $400, okay, it's not a very nice car. Okay, so that might be uh, 40000 or or some other amount. So instead of, but I, you know, instead of changing this, you know, 400, now they're willing to sell them for a lower price. But also there's more cars available. Likewise, you can think of other goods, you know, computer products. If the uh, cost of producing the computers goes down, uh, maybe you found new suppliers that are willing to sell it for cheaper. Uh, may, maybe you're outsourcing, you're doing other things. Well, that's going to make it so the supply curve shifts to the, to the right. Consumers are getting, getting better deals. They're able to get their computers at lower prices and buy more computers. So, in this case, we just finished sellers, change in cost of production. So, if there's more sellers, supply curve shifts to the right. If the cost of production go down, firms can produce at cheaper costs. They can pass on some of the savings to you. Technology. Well, technology is very similar to cost of production. Technology, such as think of uh, one of the most famous cases would be from American history, which is the cotton gin. Well, the cotton gin dramatically lowered the price of producing cotton, and because of dramatically reducing the cost of producing cotton, shifted the supply of cotton to the right because they were able to do it uh, much more cheaply, and cotton prices tended to fall. Likewise, Henry Ford, when he implemented the uh, uh, factory production line, dramatic reductions in costs um, through those new technologies, and shifted the supply curve to the right. So that's technology. Um, let's talk about expected price. If I'm a seller, let's say I have a car that I'm thinking of selling to somebody, and if I think the supply, or if I think the price next week is going to go up, I will tend to want to not sell as many cars now. I want to get the better price. So in order to have an increase in supply here, and here's my $400 car, and so I, uh, which is probably what my car is worth hopefully a little bit more than that. But in this case, I would tend to be more willing to sell my car uh, now if I thought the price was going to go down next week. I thought a lot of people would be putting their cars in uh, trying to sell them. And so I'd want to sell now, which would tend to cause the price to go down, which is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so that's how expected price works. So hopefully it's pretty clear more sellers, supply goes up. Lower cost of production, supply goes up. More better technology, supply goes up. Uh, changing uh, expected uh, price, if I expect the price to go down in the future, I want to sell now, which causes price to go down. Supply goes up. Now I need to be careful on change in technology. We're assuming these are cost reducing technologies such as interchangeable parts. There are some costs that can be enhanced costs such as in uh, healthcare. Um, sometimes the new technology is more therapeutic than the old technology, but costs more. Well, in that case, um, f hospitals might say, yeah, we want the new technology, and the supply curve may actually shift to the left, um, saying uh, the new technology that people want, they'll have to pay more for. So we're assuming cost-reducing technologies here. Okay. Hope you learned, enjoyed your discussion about supply.